Hi and welcome back. So in this video we'll capture the discussion of wage determination and price determination we had on an equation. So starting with the uh, with the discussion of wage determination. The aggregate nominal wage depends on three factors. So that is PE, the expected price, or rather the expected price level, and it depends on unemployment and the catch-all variable Z. So the negative sign below unemployment basically shows us that the wages or nominal wages depend negatively on on unemployment and the positive sign on the catch-all variables tells us that wages depend positively on the catch-all variable so let's discuss these variables in in detail starting with the expected prices which is pe so before we discuss the expected prices or rather why we use expected price levels instead of using normal price levels. Let's first ask why do prices matter in the first place? So this is because workers and firms care about real wages as opposed to nominal wages. So this means that as, as firms and as, uh, and as workers, we care not about the nominal wage we receive, but about the wage received relative to the price of goods that we buy. The same as firms, firms care more about the wages they pay. They the wages paid relative to the price of of goods sold. So what does it tell us? It tells us that as consumers and as firms, we care about the ratio of wages and price. So this is what we call the real wages. And firms also care about the wages they paid relative to the price of the goods that they, they sell. So now, why do we care about expected prices instead of price levels? This is because wages are set in nominal terms. And when, when they are set, the relative price level is not yet known. In some union contracts, for instance, in South Africa, nominal wages are set in advance for three years. So what does this mean? It means that they have to decide what nominal wages will be over the next three years based on what they expect the price levels to be over the next three years. Similar to the bargaining between workers and firms, nominal wages are set for a year, usually at the beginning of the year. So if price levels goes up unexpectedly during the year, nominal wages are typically not readjusted. So if workers expect the price of goods to double, they will ask for doubling of their nominal wages in the beginning of the year. Also, if firms expect price of goods they sell to double, they will be willing to double the nominal wages in the beginning of the year. So in the next three chapters, we will look at how workers and firms form expectation of the price level. The second variable is the unemployment. So the negative sign of the unemployment in the wage equation shows that an increase in unemployment rate decreases wages. So if you remember very well from our discussion early, we showed that higher unemployment rate forces workers to take lower wages. This then emphasizes the negative relationship between unemployment rate and wages. So the last variable is the Z. So the Z represents what we call a catch-all variable. So this stands for all the factors that affect wages given the price level, or rather given the expected price level and the unemployment rate. These are variables such as unemployment benefits or unemployment insurance. So higher, higher unemployment benefits makes the prospect of unemployment less distressing. It also increases the reservation wage in some way. What does this mean? Is that if, is it means that if unemployment benefits did not exist, some workers would have likely to live on and would be willing to take lower wages. 
but in the presence of an unemployment benefit, they, it, it, their reservation wage basically increase and they won't be willing to work for any wages lower than what they are getting from the unemployment benefit. The catch-all variables also include other variables such as minimum wages and employment protection. Minimum wages, for instance, the increase in minimum wages leads to an increase in the average wages given unemployment rate. Also, the increase in unemployment protection, which makes it expensive for firms to lay off workers, increases bargaining power, and therefore firms have got, I mean, um, workers have got more power to bargain for higher wages. So in South Africa, there are other factors that affect wage determination. These are factors such as policies that regulate the wage rates, so such as the minimum wage regulation we've just discussed, as well as the nature of specific sectors. For instance, in the mining sector, workers are more likely to earn more than their counterparts in the manufacturing sector due to the nature of the work that they do. So the other one is the potential competition from immigration. As you know, most of the laborers from our neighboring countries come to South Africa to seek better working conditions. So these usually impact the wage determination in, in, a, in South Africa. There's also the issue of inequalities in the labor market and policies aimed at reforming the labor market. So these are policies such as uh, the employment equity policy. So this this, these factors play a very big role in determining wage, uh, in determining wages in South Africa. So the next section we basically look at the price determination. So the price set by firms depends on the cost they incur during production. So the cost depends on the nature of the production function. So so far we know that we've assumed that firms only produce goods using labor as the effect of production. Therefore, it means that our production function will be given by Y or output being a function of, um, of labor productivity and labor or, or employment. So A will stand for labor productivity and N will stand for employment. So writing the production function this way implies that labor productivity A, which is output per worker, is basically constant at A. However, in reality, A is by no means constant. In fact, in South Africa, we've seen a decrease in labor productivity and an increase in wages since 1994. This is due to the labor laws favoring more workers than employers. So given the assumption that labor productivity a is constant. We can further make a simplification and make A to be equals to 1. So this means that a worker produces one unit of output in South Africa, or according to, the, to our simplification. So in this regard, it means that a, a, our production function is simply output is equals to employment. This means that the cost of producing one more unit of output is the cost of employing one more worker at wage W. The W means the wage. So the cost of producing one more unit of output, Y, is the cost of employing one more worker, which is paid in wages, and that is W. So what does this tell us? It tells us that if there was a perfect competition in the goods market, the price of a unit of output would be equal to the marginal cost of production, which is W. So it means that prices of a unit of output would be the cost of producing that output, which is the wages paid to the, to the employer, to the employee that produced that unit of output. However, many goods markets are not competitive and firms charge prices higher than the marginal cost of production. A simple way to capture this fact is to assume that firms set their prices according to this equation, 
that is price is equals to one plus the markup times uh, wages. So M in this equation represent the markup of the price over the cost of production. So if goods markets were perfectly competitive, M would be equals to zero. And in this regard, it means that prices would be equals to the wages, which is the cost of production. But since it's not perfect, since our firm, our markets are not perfect, firms have a market power and M is positive. And P will be exceeded by the cost of, or rather the price will exceed wages by the, by the factor 1 plus M. Which brings us to price being equals to 1 plus the markup times wages. So this would mean in other words that firms basically profit by adding the markup over their cost of production. So we'll end in this uh, note for this section and uh, we will take it from here in the next video.